Friend requests are a common feature of Facebook and similar digital platforms. When it comes to social media, friends are just a click away. But there is no automatic guarantee of accountability, warmth, relationship, or true belonging in a virtual community. In stark contrast, Jesus invites the disciples to be part of a community where selfless, sacrificial, and unconditional love is the core criterion. The kingdom or kingdom of God is present wherever God's people are affirmed as children of God and siblings in Christ. But Jesus gives his disciples an additional identity, that of friends. In the new status Jesus confers on his disciples, the single most important criterion is love, including the readiness to lay down one's life for another. Jesus has just taught this lesson by example when he washed the feet of his disciples, including Judas Iscariot. The new commandment of love one another, as Jesus loved us, summarizes the whole of the gospel mandate. It is not an easy commandment by any human standards, but it is possible because Jesus himself showed us the way and forgives us when we fall short. The status of disciple friends is not a request for the church, but a faith mandate. How can we live as disciple friends of Jesus in this world? When we believe, trust, obey, and follow the word, and the new commandment Jesus gives his disciples, a real new community is born. When we learn to embrace the other, those who are marginalized and othered, we partner with God in enabling the image of God to blossom to its fullest.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship on this day. This is the sixth Sunday in the Easter season and also the fifth day of May. It's a beautiful day today. The sun is shining right on the tourists over there. <laughs> um, just uh, wanted to make mention of one thing as we begin. There's an insert in your bulletin about a day uh, called Missing and Murdered Indigenous Persons Awareness Day. I know that um, we have days for everything these days. But, um, you know, if you haven't lived in Indian country before, you probably don't know the story. There are so many people who have been killed and are never identified on reservations. So we, we just remember them today in our prayers. With that uh, thought, then, Gary, is there a little interlude here? We go to Thanksgiving, okay. We remember our baptism as we begin our worship service. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In the desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you open the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. We sing together the opening hymn, number 650. Yeah. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all we can desire through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the 10th chapter of Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the, the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. Here's the psalm refrain for May 5th. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lambs. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lambs. Let's sing that together. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things. Whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Joy to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with, with trumpets, trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Shout with joy to The second reading is from 1 John, 5th chapter. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is, is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the, the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Consider this morning for a moment the value of your friends. As the years pass by and we deal with many challenges, all of us need friends. When we say that someone is a friend, what do we mean? What makes a friend a friend? Is it longevity? My longest standing friend was my eighth grade best friend with whom I played sports every waking hour and puzzled over just how to go about having a relationship with a girl. We still exchange emails once in a while but I wouldn't call Tim a close friend anymore. Longevity isn't, isn't everything. Is it regularity? Are your closest friends the people you see every week at coffee or church or the senior center, the couple you meet for dinner on a regular basis, the companion you count steps with as you walk around your neighborhood, the coworker you see most days? Or are your closest friends the people with whom you have the most in common, the ones you share passions with for fishing or quilting or gardening or whatever? Some folks primarily relate to friends online. It's not my thing. They have a multitude of friends on Facebook or Instagram or X where they share posts and pictures and politics. What makes a friend a friend? What constitutes friendships? I suppose most of us would say something like this. A friend is a person who accepts you as you are, someone you can trust, someone who will be there for you when you need them. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, The only way to have a friend is to be a friend. In today's gospel, Jesus says to his disciples and to us, I am your friend. The Greek word he uses is philos, a word that is rarely used in the New Testament. It is related to philia, which means love, familial love, as in Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. This kind of love, Jesus says, undergirds my relationship with you. You are my brothers, my sisters, 
my next of kin. Now, when you think about that, that is astonishing and homely that Jesus would say such a thing. The very Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, the incarnate Christ, the living Word who calls creation into being day by day, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the eternal judge of living and the dead, says, you are my friend. You did not choose me, Jesus says. I chose you. We like to choose our friends based on the criteria mentioned earlier. People we're attracted to. Folks we get along with. People who share our interests or circumstances. Our gender, our age, our race. Our politics. Birds of a feather flock together. But Jesus did not do that. He did not wait around for people to come to him. Alongside the Sea of Galilee, he called fishermen from their boats, come, follow me. He called Matthew from his tax booth. He chose the poor, the lame, the unclean. He ate with tax collectors and sinners, people with bad reputations. And he chooses us. Long before we were born, our names were written on God's heart. In Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, he revealed the deep desire of God's heart to reconcile the world to himself in love. So, I do not call you servants any longer because a servant does not know what the master is doing I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have heard from the Father. There are no secrets between us. You know, it's a sign of the deepest friendship when you put yourself at risk to another. Lately, a friend confided in me that he and his wife are expecting a child. Others do not yet know. They expect me to keep that confidence, their willingness To share this news with me speaks of their trust in me. They're risking something, risking being hurt if I cannot keep their confidence. A good measure of the quality of a friendship is this. What are you willing to reveal to your friends? In Christ... God made himself vulnerable to all of humankind. He stepped from eternity into mortality. He walked out on a limb to befriend us, knowing full well what would happen, that we would cut that limb off from underneath him. No greater love has anyone than this, Jesus says, to lay down his life for his friends. He did that gave his life in exchange for a friendship with us. The only way to have a friend is to be a friend. Jesus invites us to trust him with our greatest hopes and deepest fears. I have said all these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. I am basically a stranger to you. You don't know me well. And I don't know you well yet. But I'm going to risk something by telling you that I am a person who is often anxious. I worry a lot. I worry about everything. I worry about the fact that I worry a lot. Now, if any of you struggle with this, you know it's not just a little thing, but it's a big problem. You can wear yourself out with it. You can wear out the people closest to you with it. But thankfully, there is one you can never wear out. Hear these words from an old hymn, didn't make the cut in our red hymnal. One there is above all others, well deserves the name of friend. 
His is love beyond a brother's, costly, free, and knows no end. They who once his kindness prove find it everlasting love. Which of all our friends could save us, could or would have shed their blood? But the Savior died to have us reconciled in him to God. This was boundless love indeed. Jesus is the friend we need. When we lived on earth, when he lived on earth, they scorned him. Friend of sinners was his name, though the angels have adored him. Still he answers to that claim. Still he calls them dearest friends and to all their needs attend. We are not quite done with this text, though, about friendship, because there's a hook in it. Friendship with Jesus comes with expectations. You are my friends, Jesus says, if you do what I command you. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. As I have loved you, that's the kicker. That's different than just loving somebody, your neighbor, as yourself. It turns out that friendship with Jesus is kind of a package deal. When you get Jesus as a friend, you get a bunch of other people as well. You get the church. And the church is composed of all kinds of people, including many you wouldn't maybe choose to hang around with. Doesn't matter. They're still your friends. Quakers call themselves the Society of Friends. That's their actual name. It's a great name. It's a biblical name more than Lutheran or Methodist. For Quakers, friendship is not a one-way ticket but a two-way street. Friendship with Jesus generates friendship with all other human beings. We are called to initiate friendships as Jesus initiated friendship with us. It's our Christian vocation to step out on limbs, take risks, be vulnerable. The only way to make a friend is to be a friend. And in this day and age, when people are lined up against each other, The only way to make a friend is to be a friend. These days, post-retirement, I'm part of Grace Lutheran Church in Gwynn when I get there. It's been an interesting few years in the pew, learning with the congregation that we can't be a club of like-minded people. First, Victory Lutheran Fellowship at the base closed, and with that, a small group of people came over. They were different than the rest of us. Some had little in the way of a Lutheran background. Some came from very disadvantaged circumstances, had lived rough lives. Some were not white. Would we become friends? We have. Now, the Methodist Church has lost half its membership over their battles. The remaining group is weighing whether their future, will they join us? People worry, will it affect our style of worship? Our way of doing things? What if we don't really like each other? That isn't the right question, though is it? The right question is, will we love them as Jesus loved us? I guess that's always the question for us too at Bethany. Will we live as friends with one another? Not just here in these pews, but others in this congregation, even those who are homebound. And beyond that, will we initiate friendships beyond a small, tightly gripped Group, knit group of people who meet for coffee prior to worship? Will we put ourselves out there 
take risks, become vulnerable, treat others like next of kin for the sake of him who calls us his friends. May it be so. Amen. Let us continue then with the hymn, which is Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love, number 708. Now with the confession of our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We continue now with the prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, 
Let us together pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word. Fill your church with the gifts of your spirit and give understanding hearts to those who strengthen our commitments with our ecumenical and interreligious partners. God of grace, hear our prayer. You speak and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation that habitats and every kind of living things might flourish. Protect endangered species and help us to care for all your creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world is divided and the nations rage. Grant wisdom and vision to world leaders that they may seek justice, peace, and the good of all. Strengthen international partnerships and cooperation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children are, our children are in need. Comfort all who suffer, especially afflicted by anxiety, depression, and mental illness. Help us to be conduits of your love in our care for one another. We especially pray for our members and friends in the bulletin and anyone else we'd like to name out loud or silently right now. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your work is done in this place with our hands. Bless the ministries of this congregation that we may embody your love for the world. Inspire those who plan and lead worship, council members, committee members, and volunteers. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us. At the last, bring us all together around your heavenly banquet table. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh, gracious God, we also today pray for peace in the world, peace in the Middle East, peace in Ukraine, peace in the Sudan, and wherever there is discord. We remember the violence and the and the uh, on the chaos on our uh, college campuses, pray for resolution and an end to all of that for a way forward. We pray for our congregation. We thank you for the many ways in which your friendship is displayed through this congregation. We pray that you would help us to be what you call us to be on this missing and murdered Indigenous Persons Awareness Day, we raise our voices to you on behalf of our Indigenous neighbors, remembering especially the many Native women who have been missing for their fam from their families for a long time, or whose lives were taken violently by others. We pray that the missing may yet be found alive and those who committed acts of violence may be brought to justice. I pray for renewal in our relationships with all people, for befriending people who are different than us. Into your hands now, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you. Let us share that gift.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. We continue on page 152. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of all of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup when he had given thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Reminder that all are welcome at this table wherever you are in your faith journey. Please come forward to receive the bread and uh, a cup. And if, there, if you require gluten-free bread, we have that as well so, also. Come for all is ready. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Joined 
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ now strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the heritage you have given us as a community of faith. Be with us in this uncertain time of the church. Send us a pastoral leader who will love you and equip us for mission in the world. Move our hearts to a place of change. Open our hearts to hear and see your word in everything we do, every day and every moment of our lives. Move us to be the church you call us to be in this time and place. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing together. First of all, I, I wanted to um, mention that I'll be gone uh, this week from May 8th through 15th. I go visit my mom in Washington State. She's elderly um, and in a facility. My brother is not there for a while, so I'll go in and hang, be with her. Um, and during that time, if there is a pastoral emergency, I have some phone numbers in the, in the uh, bulletin. Pastor Jim During is primarily on call, but Pastor Steve Solberg will be there also if, if Jim is not available. And please call me if something comes up. I know uh, uh, Gary was mentioning his mom was in the hospital. I, I will be happy to visit somebody who's in the hospital or has a need like that anytime. Just call. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, I don't know if Kate put it in the bulletin last week or not, but I'm looking to see if there are people who are willing, would be willing to be Eucharistic ministers, which means basically to bring communion to homebound people. 
we have at least five very homebound people and probably more than that calling and I'm visiting them and that's fine but I think it would be good to have some folks Mary has done this before who would be would know how to do this and I would do a, a class and give you instruction it would be very simple to do so please think about that and by the end of the month let me know I'll be back at the end of the month let me know if you would like to do that and then I think there were some probably some mistakes in the bulletin or how I went about it today forgive me I'll figure it out okay Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. A botanist.